Oh yeah, pipe smokers. This is the Paul Gilson YouTube channel. And I am Paul Gilson, AKA Paul the Pipe Guy. Live from the outskirts of Rochester, New York in the United States of America. Thank the Lord. Yeah. And so today is Monday. Um, it's uh, July 17th. And I know that because my pipes and cigars calendar tells me so. So does Miss July, and um, my car insurance was due today. Yeah. So, um, so uh, it's currently uh, whoa, it's late. It's uh, 9:46 p.m. 46 minutes after the hour. It's 79 degrees Fahrenheit outside. A beautiful night, and uh, in the UK it is actually 2:46. 46 minutes after the hour. So, um, I, uh, was watching, um, and yeah, I do have a cigarette. Mm -hmm. So I was watching Smarty Bob's video, uh, the other day, and he had some awesome brandy that his wife picked up in her travels. So, you know, I, I normally do not drink hard liquor at all, but, you know, I do make blends and stuff like that. So we have a bottle of Jack Daniels, which you can see is empty because I've used it to make Jack Daniels blends. And Jack Daniels is, uh, it's a uh, Tennessee whiskey. It's been around since forever. Um, so... That's an empty, uh, I don't know, quart or a fifth or whatever. Um, so what we did is, uh, I've always liked nice things. I'm not a rich guy, but I'm not poor. Uh, so uh, we have these wonderful glasses here. Uh, they're rock glasses, and these were not on the cheap side. Now, they're not Baccarat's. And if any of you whiskey or bourbon drinkers... You know what Baccarat's, Baccarat glasses are. Now, these are fine lead crystal glasses, all right, and they have a wonderful crystal shape, and yeah, I paid up for them. But, you know, a glass like that, if it was a Baccarat, would be like two, three hundred dollars. Uh, this was not on the cheap side, but so what I did is I poured uh, two fingers of Jack Daniels in it. Yeah. And then I put an ice cube in it, which actually kind of frees up the botanical whatever. It releases all the things of Jack Daniels. Some people drink it straight up, but I've uh, done a lot of studies on that. And with Jack Daniels, if you put just one little ice cube in it, it freeze it up. So let's smell it. Oh yeah. So we're going to take a little sip of this. Cheers to you, Smarty Bob. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, oh. not used to hard liquor. So to chase it down, all right, now I got to put my glasses on for this, all right, to chase it down, and by the way, I have a new haircut, if you can't tell, all right, see, on the sides, in the front, that side, in the back, all right, so I just got a brand new haircut, and uh, yeah, I, I'm going to shave yet tonight, so... I had to put my glasses on because we're going to chase that little quarter of a shot down with some Pabst Blue Ribbon. No, not Bush Beer, Pabst Blue Ribbon. We have 12 ounces, which is approximately three quarters of a pint. And Pabst Blue Ribbon is made by Pabst Brewing Company in the U.S., we call them PBAs, and this used to be the beer of my choice. <clears throat> and they've been making it in the United States since 1893. Yeah, so let's 
crack this baby open. Oh, I love that sound. Let's do just another. By the way, Smarty Bob, you were guzzling that bourbon down pretty darn good in your garage. Cheers to you. Yeah, here we go. Another little sip. Ah, yeah. And we'll chase it down with some Paps Blue Ribbon. Yeah, not Anheuser-Busch. And I may switch back to this. I probably will, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I wanted to share something with you that I actually found. We have a uh, store called Tractor Supply Company up here in upstate New York. And, you know, it could be, you know, <clears throat> nationwide. I don't, I don't know, but it's a great store. You can go in there, buy chickens. You can buy this. You can buy that. Anything that has to do with farming or whatever, they got everything there. You know, they got like 75 different kinds of grease, you know, 14 million different gears, 10 million different tires. Anything that a farmer would need, fencing, whatever, go to this place called Tractor Supply. And about a year ago, I found some bush beer soap. <laughs> now, this is made in the USA. This is mountain size, okay? I mean, this thing is like three by five all day long, maybe three by 5.55 inches long. And it actually, I was reading on the box, this bush beer soap, mountain sized. It actually says that it contains bush beer and you have to be 21 years or older to buy it. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. So there it is, bush beer soap. I'm not even going to open it up. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, I think I'm going to light up another cigarette. Yeah. Just because I can. I am going to shave tonight. want to go to uh, work tomorrow looking nice and smart and spiffy, you know. I uh, actually did get, uh, and I'm going to pause the video. I want to show you this. I'll be right back in a nanosecond. All right, so Paul the Pipe Guy is back. Yeah. So um, I was researching what Elvis Presley and, uh, you know, Johnny Cash and... All the guys in the 1950s used to put in their hair, you know, because, I mean, they'd grow their hair down to here. This goes down to my nose, okay? The top does. Actually, it goes almost down to my top lip. And so I've, you know, studied. I love music and all that stuff. Smarty Bob would be the only one that is probably old enough to understand this. The rest of you blokes, you got no clue, all right? But Smarty Bob, even though he doesn't have any hair now, well, he shaves his head, whatever, I still have been fortunate to have a full head of hair, and I don't dye it or anything like that. But I Googled, you know, what did Elvis Presley put in his hair? What did Johnny Cash put in his hair? You know, because I saw those guys, you know, I've done a lot of research on them. And, you know, their hair would come down to their chin, all right, the top of it. And then they would do what's called a jelly roll and a DA, which is called, it's called a duck's ass, all right? So a lot of the teenagers back in the 1950s, they did their hair up that way. And so my research was like, 
All right, well, uh, those guys, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis and all them guys, you know, back in the 50s, uh, some of them used Vaseline to put in their hair. And, you know, I did that once, and it didn't turn out good. It took like a week to wash out. So um, I found this uh, stuff, which probably does, would, all right, it's called uh, Royal Crown Furman Pomade. And that is what Elvis Presley and all those guys used to use to put in their hair. You know, so you could have, you know, the sides could be cut short. Uh, the top uh, would come down to basically their chin. And they had a comb and they would create what's called a jelly roll. And the only subscriber that I have, Smarty Bob, would probably remember that. None of you other guys or girls would ever remember that. So I ordered some. Now, I'm not putting this in on a weekday when I have to go to work, all right? Now, I remember when guys used to, I was born in 1964, so I remember when guys used to put this in their hair, and then all of a sudden, back in the late 60s, they came out with hairspray, and they were like, forget about the wet look, the wet look is over. Now it's the dry look. And they'd have aerosol spray, which, you know, these guys all gave this stuff up. And they started, you know, blow drying their hair and putting hairspray in. And I haven't done that for years. I actually use gel in my hair. Uh, so we are not going to put Royal Crown pomade that Elvis used in my hair tonight because it could take like three four days of shampooings to get it out and I work in a machine shop so I grind metal and you know <laughs> I work with all this stuff uh you know I just don't want it to be you know uh sticking it's gonna get stuck in there it, it would just be bad um so, anyways, I'm going to take the glasses back off. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Smarty Bob, cheers to you. I do want to buy a Baccarat glass, though. I don't care if I have to spend two, three hundred dollars on a Baccarat glass. Actually, these glasses were probably about a hundred dollars a piece. I have four of them. Uh, no, three of them. I dropped one. So cheers. Yep. Smarty Bob was like guzzling that stuff down. Ah. Gonna do our chaser of Pap's Blue Ribbon. Yeah. Ah. I think I'm gonna switch from Bush to. PBA, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Actually, I'd like to drink Schlitz. Smarty Bob would remember Schlitz. He would remember uh, Black Label. Uh, you know, Smarty Bob's like 20 years older than I am, 19 years older than I am. So he would remember all the good shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Smarty Bob would remember Chesterfield King cigarettes. Now, Chesterfield Kings were a cigarette. They were lung busters. And mostly black people smoked them. I, look, I, I don't care if you're black, white, purple, and polka dots, but I know the history on this stuff. They were lung busters. I... I I don't even know if they still make Chesterfield Kings, but Smarty Bob, you sure would remember them, along with Paul Malls, Camels, Parliaments, all that stuff. 
So anyways, um, yeah. Well, it's uh, 10.02 p.m. in the, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, here's the other thing. Um, actually, a couple of my subscribers, uh, I, I hate to even call them that. You're not subscribers, you're friends. Uh, and I talked about going to the UK and they said, why don't you start by going out to the, the Ohio pipe club thing which is in I believe Cincinnati Ohio it's in I, I believe it's August 19th and 20th and uh, we'd love to see you there so you know I did some research and it's like how much does it cost to go there with a train and it's like a hundred bucks but it takes like 16 hours then I looked, how much does it cost for a flight? The flight is like five and a half hours, but it's like $280, which, but it's only five and a half hours. Forget about that, man. My time was worth money. I even contacted uh, my good friend, uh, the tunnel take, Greg. And I said, hey, man, you're in Virginia. I looked at the map. He's here. The pipe thing in Ohio is over here, which means he'd have to go up here and then go there. So I said, hey, man, I'll pay for all your gas, whatever. He's like, well, uh, I'll be driving my motorcycle. And uh, a lot of people think we might uh, be gay. And uh, I says, there ain't no way that I'm going to ride on the back of a motorcycle with some other dude. Can you picture me with, uh, Greg is a good friend of mine. The tunnel take, check him out. The tunnel take. Can you picture me with my arms around Greg for 600 miles? Uh, that ain't going to happen, dude. I'm going to pay the 300 bucks and fly out there. All right. You know, now we might room up together or whatever. You know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we got a month to do it. Oh, Lord. Somebody help me. So, yeah, uh, I don't know uh, who's going to be at the convention, the pipe convention in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, I want to be there. Anyways, Paul the Pipe Guy, yeah, still alive. My God, with a new haircut. And, yeah, I will do a video. I, look, I will do a video. When I put this stuff in my hair, but it's not going to be tonight. Uh, Greg, I'll be in contact with you and we'll see if we can get a room together or something like that, work something out. And I ain't riding there, or driving there, or whatever. I'll, I'll just fly there. Okay. Whatever. If I take a flight like on an Airbus, which. I remember my honeymoon in 1995 with my estranged wife. And we took a 5.5 hour flight to uh, Aruba. And I have a sick sense of humor. And I was just like, you know, we were on an Airbus and they're showing movies, you know, and stuff like that. And I says, uh, told my wife, I was like, you know, I'd really like to show like a plane crash documentary <laughs> can you imagine flying on a plane for five and a half hours all of a sudden some dude casts up a plane crash documentary and how you know I mean that that is a sick sense of humor but I thought it was funny you know I I would have loved to have been able to break into that network, 
show a plane crash documentary of all these planes crashing and burning, yeah, you know, and watching everyone else sweat it out, and I would just be the chuckling. Uh, anyways, I've, I've said enough. Smarty Bob, cheers. All right. All right. Smarty Bob was like guzzling the bourbon down like this. All right. He was like, oh, my wife brought me some bourbon. Ha, 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 ha. Here we Yeah. And he was like that. And then took a second glass, which, God bless you, you know. <clears throat> I can't do that. So uh, he was obviously having fun and smoking a cigar. God bless you. You know what? Smarty Bob, I think, is like 78. So, if, you know, hey, if you want to have a, a couple glasses of bourbon and smoke a cigar in your garage, that's all good. I think that's great. You deserve it. You've earned it. Yeah. And I've earned what I and enjoy myself. Uh, so anyways, Paul the Pipe Guy, over and out. Yeah.